Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the Arena Regulars podcast. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we're your source for weekly drunken Magic the Gathering arena content. Yep, basically regular dudes drinking irregular beer and talking about Magic the Gathering in particular, their online client, Magic the Gathering Arena. That's right. And this week is our first sips of the Forgotten Realms. We get to talk all about the uh, the set that just came out. Yay. Yes. I'm excited. Me too. But first, each week we both bring a beer, we drink our own, then drink each other's, then rate them on a scale of bronze to mythic and choose the best for last. So with that, Jeff, what is on tap? Okay, this week I brought Octopus Wants to Fight. This is an IPA made by Great Lakes. Pretty sure we must have had Great Lakes on here a couple of times before. Absolutely. Last week? It's yeah. 6.2%, and the can has, well, an angry-looking octopus with bo- boxing gloves on. So <laughs> he definitely wants to fight. What nice. did you bring? I brought uh, from McClellan's Brewery, This Is This. Okay. <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> I liked it just because of that like name. That I know. It reminds me of the uh, the like Incredibles meme where <laughs> Mr. Incredible is just like, math is math, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, it's uh, kvaik, which um, apparently means yeast in Norwegian. Uh, so okay. it's a yeast beer, which, you know, sure, it does, is, that's just kind of beer, right? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's 5.6%. <laughs> I guess you'll have to taste it and let me know. Is it like a Nordic lager or something? Yeah. Um, anyway, it's 5.6%, and uh, it also has a, a picture of someone's hand holding a hop. Uh, so it, it's like, this is this, and it's just that. <laughs> <laughs> Displaying hop. Yeah, this is this. It's just yeast and hop. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the beer. <laughs> yeah, that sounds appealing to me. All so. right, there we go, yeah. Um, magic news. All right, we got some fun stuff this week. Uh, a couple yeah. things are just like changing up in arena. Um, a uh, little bit of minor stuff. There's no longer FNMs on Arena. We're not going to have it anymore. Uh, now that uh, local game stores are opening up again, they're going to have FNMs there in person. And so we are now going to have midweek magic, um, which I think is a lot better. I'm, I'm going to be happy with this, I think. I think this is a really good call from mm-hmm. them, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, Get people back into their stores on Friday nights and let them you know, practice and prepare or just have some fun on Tuesday through Thursday <laughs> Exactly. Um, so I am happy with that. Uh, also, we have a standard 2022 queue that is exploding mm-hmm. right now. Um, you can play the new rotation, basically. Uh, so we get to get rid of base- all of last year. Um, last year? Yeah. No, the year before that. Anyway. Right. Uh, and it's only best of one, but it seems like everyone's really into it. Uh, like Some people were hoping that they could get some best of threes, but... Um, I don't know. I, I liked it. Did, have you been playing it? This is pretty much all I've been playing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been playing this ever since I scrubbed out of all of my gems in draft. <laughs> so we'll get to that later. But uh, I've been too broke to draft, so I've been playing standard 2022. I would love a best of three, but uh, I will say that I'm pretty sure, it's a long time ago now, but I'm pretty sure last year they did a similar thing, standard 2021. Oh, okay. And you weren't even allowed to play ranked. It was just a play best of one queue. Okay. And so the fact that they offer a ranked queue this year is definitely a step in the right direction. Maybe someday we'll be able to, you know, get a little head start on standard in, in best of three ranked queues. But for now, I'm, just, I'm having more fun than I thought I would with a best of one yeah, absolutely. Uh, constructed queue. I agree with that as well. Also, you know, maybe this will get... It's been so popular that no one's really playing regular standard. Or current standard, right. I guess. Um, so, you know, maybe this is the thing that has Watsy thinking they should change up rotation a little bit. I don't know what goes into that. And I know that they make sets with a certain idea of what mana bases you'll have for each rotation and all that. Um, so maybe it doesn't work for a little bit. But hopefully they'll, they'll think about rotating things a little bit differently with Arena being so popular. Yeah, I mean, obviously their concern is, you know, they don't want the queue times to be too long. That's the reason not to just offer everything. Mm-hmm. And so, like you're saying, the fact that the standard 2022 queue, ki- queue times are so low because so many people are playing it, maybe they will consider a best of three option. Yeah. Well, not just that, but like, what if they just start rotating differently or sooner? Yeah, that would be, yeah. that would be great. So like, maybe the popularity from this will make them rethink their rotation schedule. Um, which I would love. That would be great. 
Um, also, we got a quality of life patch. Uh, finally, you can add lands to your deck much easier than before. Holy crap. Um, I don't know why it took them so long to do this, but literally now you can just click a land and hit plus or minus, and it just doesn't. Yeah. Instead you of, can actually do it with any card. Oh, like any, every card? Noticeable, thank, most noticeable with your lands, yeah. Yeah, thank God, though. Like, the amount of times I put, like, one card copy of a card or something, and then I'm like, later I have to search it up again just to add it. I'm like, oh, totally, this yeah. is so... <laughs> You have to like switch. You used to have to switch to the other view where you can easily add by clicking on the side. On the side, yeah. And then switch back to your... <laughs> yeah, so if you're in horizontal, you can't do it, but you have to go to vertical to do it. And then I always forget exactly. what the card is actually called. I know what the picture looks like. That could be... So right. anyway, <laughs> so that's really nice. Uh, so I really hope yeah. that they keep doing things like this and fix the sideboards. That would be great. Thank you. Although I keep getting caught because I'm so used to the old system that I'm just like spam clicking to get something out of my deck and mm -hmm. now I'm like oh wait I have to go and minus it out I think. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps popping up with the plus and minus thing over and yeah over. yeah the plus and minus just keeps like zooming in and out <laughs> yeah um also twitter tweets this week all right so I'm not super huge on the secret layer stuff but this is the first mm -hmm. thing I'm like I wanted this why can't they're just giving this away this is so awesome um, I don't know if everyone has seen this, but a bunch of streamers have been getting these loot crates, like secret layer loot crates, basically. But the crate, it's just a, it's a big wooden crate. But on the inside, it has obviously a bunch of stuff, but it's a cooler. It's just a cooler for your beer. It has a bottle opener on the outside. And then it also comes oh, with a backpack that's full of all the bar tools you would need to make any cocktail you want, basically. Like a what? shaker and spoons and strainers and everything. And then a bunch of magic cards. And I'm like... We're sure Watsy did this? Yeah. Well, it, or at least Secret Layer. I don't know. This is so awesome. This is the first time... Yeah, I, I love that. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard Watsy doing anything around, like, alcohol or, or liquor. Or, exactly, yeah. This, is, this gives us hope. Maybe we can yeah. get a preview card. <laughs> I always thought it was impossible because we screw were... Screw that. You know, How do I get one of these things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, screw that. I just want a crate. Give me a crate. <laughs> <laughs> I need a cooler, man. I don't have one. Yeah. So those are. that's the first time I've been like, man, that's so cool. I wish I had that. Even though it says secret layer all along the side, it's still like a cool black crate that, you know, I don't know. I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. I like <laughs> it. Um, anyway, let's get right into it. AFR. <laughs> I just keep thinking about what you said about AFR yeah. last week. Uh, Every time, man. Every time. If you don't know, uh, go listen to our last episode. Jeff has a little quip about AFR. But anyway, so Jeff, how do you feel about uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms so far? Uh, so far, I've been really, really enjoying it. Like I said, kind of uh, alluded to earlier, I've been, I started out playing a lot of draft mm -hmm. and then I switched to standard 2022 i haven't played any like actual standard or historic at all i've just been playing those two formats um but i've enjoyed both of them despite extremely low success rate in in limited Yikes. for me yeah <laughs> uh how about you uh i mean i've been having a blast i've mainly been playing sealed at draft um i always like doing a sealed just to have my little uh well it also helps to kind of know whether i like cards or not that i look at so mm -hmm. I don't have to waste picks on things that I can quickly be like, oh, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, I've been having a great time. I've been doing, you know, mixed. Some, some are great decks or no, no, no. More like some are decks that have won a lot and some are decks mm -hmm. that have not won a lot. I don't know if any of them are great. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure, when you look at them in a few weeks, when you understand the format better, you'll be like, oh, yeah, none of these were good. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it, that's been pretty fun. And um, I've, I've been really lucky. I have opened just a ton of Planeswalkers and a lot of stuff. So that seems to be that's... helping quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tends to be a good strategy. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, you should just open the, you know, Spider Queen or whatever her name is. Lolf. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce it, but um, wolf. wolf. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, I, yeah, I think it's it's fun. I I was very surprised. Like venturing, I was kind of mm -hmm. you know, it seemed really cool. I didn't know if I would like it, um, but I've been having a lot more fun with it than I thought. Yeah, it is cool. It's it, uh, it's a lot cooler than I had first thought. 
I don't know if it's good, but it's fun. I still have no idea. I don't know what what's good in the format and what's not. So on my first draft, I did pretty well. I think I got five or six wins, mm-hmm. maybe five wins. Um, but I opened the blue dragon. The Imer- oh, okay. The Imerith yeah, or just whatever, draw which all is the cards. very difficult to beat in limited. Yeah. So, uh, I basically won all the games where I drew that. Mm-hmm. Had some games where I didn't draw that and, uh, you know, uh, ended up with a, a pretty decent record. So that didn't really tell me anything. You know, I didn't... All I know now is that that blue dragon wins you the game <laughs> most of the time that you cast it. <laughs> Which I probably already knew. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I played... Um, one of my drafts, I was playing Gruul Pack Tactics. And I ended up drafting six Knoll Hunters. And three of the uh, Gruul Uncommon the other pack tactics card that's also a null and it was just like nobody wanted any of these cards and i was like okay and i ended up doing pretty well with it <laughs> just null tribal yeah just just two drops just two drops that attack and get counters and they'd always like start killing the first couple and then i just keep playing them over and over again they're just like nice nice i'm like that's, yeah. <laughs> my entire deck is just this card uh that's great and it was good my plan is to play these and attack all every turn that's it and that's what i did and i was like Sometimes I have combat tricks, some, I, sometimes I don't. I'm just attacking. And I, that was a lot of fun. I liked that quite a bit. So, um, hey, two drops. Pretty good. That reminds me of the old days when they had those cards that would get plus one plus one for each other card with the same name. Yeah. And sometimes you'd get those drafts where you just got like eight Timber Pack Wolves. Yeah. Your whole game is to just play Timber Pack Wolf every fucking turn. And it was like impossible to beat you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's great. I've actually, most of my decks have just revolved around two drops that I liked. Like, I had another deck that was just um, a ton of equipment and just a bunch of the uh, Steadfast Paladin, the two mana 2 2 with lifelink. And mm-hmm. then the other one that's a two mana 3 1, but when it's equipped, it gets plus zero plus two. And I was just like, oh, yeah. Sick. I got three of those plated, uh, the plated armor. They get sure, plus, yeah. plus three plus three and uh, ward. And then it can equip for zero if you have three artifacts or three other equipment. And that, that worked out pretty well. You're just like, all right, slap it on the lifelinker attack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, 5-5 five, five lifelink ward one. It's yeah. To beat. And then later, just more and more. So uh, it's, been, it's been fun. <laughs> I do like drafting two drops, so uh, it feels good. Yeah, I've been trying to go like all in. Like a few of the drafts, I'm just like, okay. I'm black, white, venture. Mm -hmm. Let's just take everything that says venture into a dungeon on it. And in the end, I thought I had a pretty good deck, but I 0-3'd with that one. But it looked good to me on paper. It had a good curve, lots of removal. I was supposed to be gaining incremental advantage every turn with my venturing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I just drew poorly or what. I I remember that deck was kind of particularly weak to flyers, Mm. because I just didn't get a lot of flyers. I got two of the gargoyles, but I never seemed to... To draw them. It never oh. seemed to line up properly. Yeah. Uh, and then I did, like, all uh, blue-red, all in on dice. dice rolling. So I had a few of the uncommons that really pay you out for dice rolling, like the Barbarian class, the one that makes fairies, mm-hmm. uh, and then one other one. And then I just took all the dice rolling cards. And uh, that one also 0 3 So yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know if that deck's good. No, I had it. But a, to be fair, I, I did not roll higher than a 9 in... The entire I must have rolled like sixteen dice and I never rolled higher than a nine. <laughs> That's weird. It was it was getting like comical. Uh, the last it, one I was just I think the very last one I did was a seventeen when it didn't matter and I was already lo- losing the game. <laughs> and I was just like fuck you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I I like tried playing that deck except for I had a bunch of the pixie guides or the uh, the yeah, yeah. two minute one three that lets you roll two dice and. I remember getting to a point where I had played the, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the, uh, the three mana two one that has flash and like, um, tap something down or it like freezes it down. Uh-huh. And I had two of the fairies out and it was at a point where I was like, I'm not really going to win this, but I was like, let's just roll some dice. And I rolled two twenties <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I don't need, it doesn't do anything th- like, Look, fuck off. D- I don't need the 20. It could be just above 10. Like, now we know how D&D players feel when they waste their critical hit. Yeah, I was like, oh, th- <laughs> why can't they be on a card that actually cares if I had a, a critical hit? So Actually, the only time I hit a 20 was on the card that um, 
it either puts it to the top of their library or I like active trees in it for a fucking oh, turn. Yeah. And I was like, no, no I don't want I don't to want... <laughs> like, no. Yeah, well, because it's not active treason because it you just gain control of it, but it doesn't have haste. So it's like... one extra turn. But it's like, because you don't gain control of it forever. It goes yeah. back after your next turn. Exactly. So you get like one attack with it. And it's like, but now my opponent doesn't have to reinvest the mana and redraw the card. That's what I wanted it to, to do. do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel great about the, the dice rolling deck. Um, I think it can be powerful. Like some of the, the build around that makes a fairy every time. Well, yeah. Or like a little sprite every time is, is obviously the, very powerful. Where you want to be, yeah. And I had the uncommon that gets like flying and menace every time you do it or something. Um, that one was only okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I just felt like I was getting overpowered, but I also flooded out a lot mm-hmm. and hit, like I said, I hit fours on every roll, so my cards were always doing the weakest thing they can be doing. Gotcha. Yeah. So that that helps out on why it feels underpowered, because the one to nine rolls are meant to be underpowered. The, like, ten to nineteen rolls are supposed to be, you know, okay for the mana cost, mm-hmm. and then the twenty is supposed to be the big thing on certain cards. So the fact that I you know I'd have the I'd have advantage with my barbarian class and I'd roll it's like two four you hit a four I was like come on <laughs> <It's> like, yeah ah. <laughs> yeah I mean like I don't know the the dice rolling cards that I like are just the ones that are good and then just get better like I like that uh, hoarding ogre the one that like when it attacks it makes a treasure or two or three. Yeah, like, that card is, is good. I've really liked it. But, that like, card. you don't even need it in your dice rolling deck. You just need it in a deck that... No. It's better in the, like, red-black deck that cares about treasures. Or just a deck that wants to play something big. Uh, but being able to, like... I think it's just pretty good in any red deck. Yeah, it just seems great. Um, so those are the kind of dice rolling cards that I liked. They were like, oh, okay, this card's just good, and then I don't have to take any of the dice rolly, the things that care about dice rolling. I just have to play dice roll cards that totally, end up yeah. being good. And, and so this was a bit of an experiment to see how that deck works, because my first two picks were the Red, Blue, Uncommon, and then the Pixie Generator one. Or Got it. Okay, so you... I was like, all right, let's just see. We have the two payoffs. Mm-hmm. Let's see if Dice Rolling deck is a thing. And I think I'm with you that I'd rather just have, like, a mediocre Red, Blue deck that... Uh, like, not mediocre, I mean, just, like, a mid rangey kind of Red, Blue deck mm-hmm. that uh, sometimes will spike a good Dice Roll, but I don't think you want to rely on it quite, quite as much as I was. Yeah, so. no... Because, like, the fairies are good-ish uh, in that. And then, um, but, like, that one dwarf that, like, whenever you roll a dice, it deals one damage is not awesome. And No, I didn't even play that. I have also not played it. I guess, does it count if you have, like, a bunch of pixies out and you roll three or four dice at once? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you're... Re- that is each, is each a distance, the instance of rolling a die. Okay. Yeah. At least I think that's how that'd it works. be. It would be fun to just like you know lava axe someone out of nowhere with a bunch of pixies in that or like a couple of those. Um, that'd be fun. Feels like the type of thing that I will lose to, but never win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you build that deck, and of course, like you can't do anything with it. But um, yeah. I did have uh, several games where I was playing uh, Faraday's Fireball, which is the five mana yeah. deal five. Uh, and then it either deals two damage to both of you or just to your opponent. And it always was in the situation where I had, like, two of those in my hand. And I was at, like, four life. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> damn it. Okay, I can't... Do I just roll Do I roll the dice and see if I can survive this or no? <laughs> but, uh, so that was pretty bad. Having my prime, like, my great removal in my hand being like, no, no, this is not good in the deck I built. I need to be more aggressive, I think. So I had a game where my opponent was at two, and I was at three or four. They had a lethal attacker, but I had a blocker. And they Faraday's fireballed my blocker so that they could attack with it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, but you're at two, and I'm at four. Yeah. Like, if you roll nine or less, you lose. You lose. <laughs> and if you, so it basically became, if you roll one to nine, you lose. If you roll, like, ten to twenty, you win. Mm-hmm. Because then he would attack me for lethal, and yeah. he rolled, like, twelve or whatever. Oh, <laughs> God. Died. He's like, of course. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> oh. But that was awesome. That was just an awesome game, because it all came down to just a stupid die roll. A die roll. Like, Come on. You know, it'd be fun. Okay, so this is what I, I had thought that this was going to happen. I talked about this last week. That, like, the dice rolling was going to be... They want to make it fast enough that, like, the game keeps moving, but it doesn't have mm-hmm. enough of, like, the exciting the only exciting part about dice rolling is waiting for it to like land 
Yeah. Um, so I wish the game could, I wish Arena would know when it was really important. Like it's getting. That's close. what I was about to say. If like in that situation, it knew that we had to had to roll this one out. Exactly. And have it, you know, teeter for a bit. Or <laughs> or like maybe you can push a button that's like fast dice rolling or slow, and it like rolls yeah. across all the way to like from your pet to their pet or something. Like how about this, you get one slow roll per game. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> or maybe per it's a per match. To you when you want to use. Yeah. It. Per match. Yeah. Um. That would be sweet. You're like, oh, I'm going to slow roll this one. I, that would be fun. <laughs> I, I would think I would like that a bit better. Um, yeah. Because otherwise, you just like play something. It's just like 20, 20, 7. And you're like, wow, okay, yeah. well, cool. I got Wait, it. what happened? And then you just. Oh, I lost. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't want that. Wait, what? And then you just go nice. Every time you get a 20, you just say nice. And your opponent says nice. Yeah. And that's like what you do. I did, I did have someone play treasure chest, which is the rare. Yeah. And they rolled a one and dealt three damage to themselves <laughs> after sacrificing it. And I was just like, oh, man. Oh, he was... said, oops. I said, sorry. It was a whole ordeal. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, man. That actually, a similar thing happened to me where I had a very commanding board state. And I was playing uh, Loth, the Spider Queen. And mm -hmm. uh, so I had a couple spiders on the battlefield. And I had done a couple shenanigans to kill my creatures so that I could get um, Loth's like, loyalty up high enough that I could start trying to do some other things with it. And uh, I was quickly clicking through the loyalty abilities and I just missed clicking the zero uh, draw a card, lose a life. And I clicked, you know, minus three, make two spiders. And she was at three. Yeah. And so then she just <laughs> dies. And then I get spiders and I just stop for a second. And I go, oops. <laughs> My opponent's like, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm like, crap. And I was like, oops, oops, no. And I was like, I'm going to lose this game because I just punted my Planeswalker. <laughs> this is the worst. Yeah. Uh, luckily, those that spiders have me. Menace, so I ended up winning because they only had one blocker. So that was They're cool. not bad. Like, They're 2 1 Menace Reach is a totally serviceable creature. It really is. Like, getting two of those is, is good. It's pretty good. So um, I've actually been happy with that. And so, luckily, the punt didn't ruin everything, but right. uh, it was a horrible moment of, oh, I had too many beers. I got to slow down. I'm clicking way too fast. <laughs> that reminds me of the old, like, opponent has a million mana. You have two big creatures out, and then they slap a uh, Shatter Skull Summit into play untapped <laughs> yeah. and, you, and then just concede the game yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like no we all know what happened there yeah that's happened with me a lot with Agadim's Awakening <laughs> where I do exactly yeah. the same thing and you're like oh man so and it, that's the worst feeling because it's asking you if it's tapped or untapped mm -hmm. and it's too late but you have to make this decision about tapped or untapped yeah because you, you can't you're like back back yeah, cancel you can't cancel out of that <laughs> uh, which sucks so bad um <laughs> Man, yeah, it's like uh, I definitely punted a game because there's that common um, three blue blue for the four five with ward three, mm -hmm. and uh, I had five mana and I tried to bite it with that three mana um, bite spell, and mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, it has ward, but it's I can definitely pay it, and I just like threw it, and it was like, do you want? It? Are you sure? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and then I just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm totally sure. Nope. Yeah. All right, so I dealt four damage <laughs> to it, and. Uh, or whatever, and I was, oh no, I didn't get to deal any damage to it, because it just died, yeah, or counted it, and I was like, oh, crap, okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> I just, all right, well, I lose, just because I didn't read the card, ugh, remember kids, yeah. reading the card explains the card, sometimes, don't, don't forget, <laughs> that, uh, don't forget that that common has ward three, not ward one, like I was thinking, there is a lot of ward one going around, mm -hmm. too, so, and it asks you no matter what. If it has ward anything, even if you can pay, it'll say, are you sure? Yeah. You know? So So it, it does make you second guess, but then I'm, I've done it so many times where I'm like, no, of course I can. I already thought about yeah, that. I, it always works out. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, so I went up against a card. I didn't even know it was in the set. Um, so let me see if I can find it. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. Um, but it's like the, uh, it's, okay, Westgate Regent. Do you remember this card? It's a three black nope. black for a four four vampire with flying. It has ward. Oh, okay. They have to discard a card. And then when, yeah. whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was like in the commanding board state. I was like, okay, sick. I'm going to win this game. I was at like 16 or something. And then they played that off of something. So it got a plus one plus one counter through like that, um, the sacking a treasure through that artist card, mm -hmm. the, the Rakdos one. 
So it's a 5-5 five, five flyer that when it deals damage to me next turn, it's going to be a 10-10. Ten, ten? And I was like, <laughs> what? What? And I only have one card in hand, hmm. so I cannot kill it. <laughs> Interesting. I was like, wow, I didn't even think this was a card in the set. Crap. Yeah. Uh, I had a had a draft where I opened it pack three, mm-hmm. but I was blue red. Ugh. Um, but I was debating going uh, blue black because black also seemed open. Mm-hmm. And I was like, now nah, just go red. It seems a little like like I'm getting some more red stuff than black stuff. But it was really tight. Mm-hmm. And then I opened this in pack three and cried. <laughs> so I was like, you can't take it now. <laughs> it's double black. No. Yeah. And this card is an absolute house in limited. It's so it's so good. Like, the worst case scenario is that they two-for-one themselves to kill it. Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the worst thing that can happen when exactly. you play this card. At least now we know why the uh, there's that uh, six-mana kill spell in black that deals 11, minus 11, minus 11 to a creature. So at least you can, mm-hmm. after it hits, you can use that card to, to kill it, I guess. Um, though, I, it took me a while, actually. You still got to two-for-one yourself, though. You got to discard it's a card. It's true. You do have to discard a card. Um, but actually, with that, it, it's uh, the Beholder's uh, Gaze. What is that called? Beholder's Beam. I don't know. Eyes of the Beholder. Is it Eyes of the Beholder? Something like that. Um, but so, it has 11 eyes. So yes. Nice. Yes, exactly. That's what I was about to say. So it has 11 eyes, the one big one, and then 10 of the stocks. Because I was mm-hmm. thinking, like, why is it 11? That's such a random... It feels so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you do... Oh, the eyes. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I guess that's like a D&D thing that people know, that Beholders have 11 eyes. Or... I mean, I've been learning some things about D&D. That's been fun. Um, yeah, that has been a cool kind of sign of side effect. Yeah. Know? I mean, I think that most of that was happening through just like spoiler season, but it's just been it's been cool to, to see like, oh, okay, um, that's what like a deck of many things is or um, the Tarrasque or something. Like I never knew what that was. And people like, it's a very well-known you know, a monster that you'll have to fight against or, or uh, I guess, run away from, actually. But, mm-hmm. yeah. I Overall, I've just been really enjoying this set, um, as always. I don't think... So, I always think that I'm looking at spoilers and I'm like, oh, okay, this will be fun. And then I start playing, I'm like, it's just... It's fun having a new magic set. I, I always Sorry. like it. I don't think there... There were sets that I like more than others, but, like, no matter what, it's just... It's a new magic set, so it's, it's fun. Yeah, new magic sets are always going to be great, at least for a little while. It's mm-hmm. just about their longevity. You know? Exactly. Have you found this format to be fast? Like, you, you seem to be playing some two drops and and equipment, you said. Um, I don't know if I would consider it fast. Um, I, I just tend to always start play, playing fast and then see if I can get okay. there. And then if, if, it, if I come up short over and over again, then I'll start to try to go slower. But my first initial reaction is usually I want to just go really fast, especially in best of one, uh, like, draft games. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if I have a good handle of it that way. Um, but I do think most of my games have gone for a long time. The only time it'll end quickly is, you know, someone sees a board and just, like, scoops. Um, or they don't have the mana they want or whatever. But, um, but no, I, I don't think it's, it's extremely... Quick, yeah, I think things. most of the creatures in general are kind of small. Mm-hmm. If you get behind the eight ball on somebody with pack tactics or whatever, that can that can really suck. Yeah. Um, but I found often like the board kind of stalls up, and then we're sitting there and we're like, "All right, first dragon wins. Let's see it." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Either that or the amount of times I've died from that f- freaking stupid. <sighs> what is it? Five mana, four four in black. That like you can pay six to roll a dice and it drains. Oh yeah, <laughs> that card's. I've never terrible. never had the pleasure of losing to that. No, card it's just yet. it's it's another one. Okay, we've had three of these recently. So like in yeah. in call time, it was the three seven thing mm-hmm. that would tap and do that, and then in Strixhaven, it was the fly or the four mana uh, flyer that would do it, and now we have this thing. And I was thinking that paying six was just way too much for this effect, but if you're stalled out and it's just a four four that's just gonna roll dice and. Oh, you always lose two, no matter what. So, um, right. <laughs> and it's just like I hate this card, and I keep losing to it. Um, yeah, because that's like the worst way to go. Is a board stall? You just keep drawing lands, and your opponent drains you for two, four turns in a row, and you like, die. It's like that sucks. That sucks. <laughs> At least with the so that that talisman, the like uncommon uh, black talisman, that's a house. 
that, that mm -hmm. like when you attack, your creature gets death touch and it drains on a two on attacks. And then you're like, it just doesn't matter. You get to, you know, your opponent's going to be playing shit creatures the whole time and just keep putting the talisman on it. And then you're just, you're going to die. <laughs> Like it's, it's awful. Yeah, I had that once. I didn't draw it a single time. Yeah. But I did have it in one of my decks. Yeah. <laughs> so that card is awesome. And losing to that is like, okay, this card's really good. And like, man, I wish I had it. The other one's like... My opponent got it early enough that they were able to build around it. And all, with any token exactly. generators or anything. Or, or just playing whatever cards. and um, Just a lot of creatures. Exactly. <laughs> but then the other card is like, this card sucks. I... I passed it up many times and i keep losing to it and i just don't i i hate i hate it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you gotta have that card that that you think sucks but you always lose to. well because the i put it in my first deck that i was playing and the first turn i had it i was like sick and i played it and then it didn't roll a dice when i played it and i was like what and i looked at it i was like i have to pay six to roll no <laughs> to no. activate this for six <laughs> i was like here. no i don't really... i thought that it just like did it when i entered the battlefield so um I guess it keeps. I keep losing to it because it's repeatable, and I don't like it because it is repeatable. Whatever. I don't know. Anyway, it, I mean, I also think it's bad. But, yeah. You know, some formats are slow enough where that's that's going to be a good card. I still don't really think this is it because I think the dragons are better, like symmetry breakers than absolutely. That. Because right? like just play a red dragon and kill them next turn. Exactly. Instead of that. But obviously, you know, that's a common. It's easier to get your hands on than one of the dragons. Exactly. But the dragons all feel good to me. I've, I've won and lost with almost all of them. So. Yeah, I think... I, I don't love the green one as much. Um, just because mm. most of the time it feels like I yeah, have... Yeah, you're right. Because the uncommon, the uncommon dragons, like, all uh, basically kill something or, like, do something really effective. And the green one is, like, you have to trade your creatures... For theirs, basically. Unless you have a way of like... I don't know. I guess the dream would be have nine mana, play it, and then... Because it's just if a creature dealt... If a, one of your opponent's creatures is dealt damage, it dies, right? Mm -hmm. So the dream would be nine mana, play that, then play a magic missile targeting three of their creatures. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean... That, that's, that's not awesome. going to happen. But like, <laughs> that would be awesome. That's like the dream in my mind. But, uh, but besides that, uh, yeah, the other ones are great. I like them. So. Yeah, I really liked the white uh, and red ones. I've played those the most. Mm -hmm. um, because they're a mana cheaper, they're only six. Right? They're six. And the white, the white one really feels like it swings games. Mm -hmm. like it comes in, and then it freezes something for a turn, and it's a 4-4 four, four flyer. It feels like it's really hard to lose a race from yeah. that. I also love that the white one has the freeze ability. Like, mm -hmm. sweet. Like, you know, I know it's a D&D &D thing, because apparently the the white dragon is like a ice dragon um, mm -hmm. where normally in magic we're used to like ice stuff being blue, but I'm just happy that they're like, you know what? Yes, we can give the freeze ability to white. And it's also, you know, white taps things down. White should be able to yeah, freeze. It doesn't down. feel that like non white. Exactly. Um, so I'm like, please more, more, more of this. I, I, I could do this. Um, white ice. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, I had a deck with like two red dragons, a white dragon and an adult gold dragon. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> three or four dragons fires um and that deck started out oh two and i was just freaking out i was like what the <laughs> hell i have a great curve i have so much efficient removal and i just have like so much top end to win a long game i ended up going six two so i was like okay <laughs> okay <laughs> like fuck yeah uh, but i don't think i drew the adult gold dragon a single time Wow. But the red dragons really did work. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. two red dragons will just end the game. You just play yeah. one and play the other. It's very hard for you. Well, the cool thing that I didn't think about the red dragons is that they, they kind of have haste in the sense that they're going to hit your opponent for four, which would essentially be them attacking. Except for it's you like now, you haste, also have a blocker, though. And that you get yeah. through their flyers if they had any. So Right. You get the damage for sure, mm -hmm. and you have a blocker. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about trading off with something in the air. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it seems great. I, I, and I'm really happy that we have these cool, like, you know, kind of tier below dragons, but like, you know, they're everywhere, you know? So it's nice to be like, yeah, there are dragons a lot. You see them every draft, even if they're not your colors. Yeah, totally. It, it does feel like they're not just this, oh, hopefully you get one of the cool dragons or something. And the last thing I wanted to say about this limited format is, and just the last few sets in general, actually, I really love that they're just embracing treasure tokens. Mm. Um, because treasure tokens are an awesome mechanic, 
and it, it's been playing out really well in this format in particular. I find all the treasure stuff is great. Absolutely. I love, so this is something we were talking about in our Strixhaven uh, happy hour episode was like mm -hmm. a ward card where you had to sacrifice a treasure. That was like a joke we were talking about. Well, this yeah. <laughs> isn't the same, except for there are a lot of creatures that care about you sacrificing a treasure Spe to play them. Specifically using treasure mana, yeah. And I think that's awesome. Well, number one, the flavor is really great because cool. they're all like hired hands or like whatever, uh, hired blade or mm -hmm. something. You um, have to pay them in coin. Yeah, which is like a, that, that flavor is nice, but it also just makes it so interesting to be like, yeah, this is like a four mana three three, but if you pay a treasure, then it has first strike and haste. You're like, okay, well, this is great. Like it just, mm -hmm. I, I I really like it, especially just putting the emphasis on, hey, you should use your treasures on certain cards. Um, right. I like that. Because usually the play pattern is ramp out something big or whatever. Exactly. Or, you know, or never use your treasures unless you have, you have to, to to cast whatever you're casting. Uh, and so this kind of changes that up a bit. Exactly. It also means that like. Playing red black, it makes it super easy to splash stuff, which I love. Yeah, red black being the like easiest deck to splash in is unusual. It's great yeah, because it's nice change. Exactly, we're, it's always green decks that get to splash stuff, and I like yeah. in this set a lot of the uh, green ramp is just like getting more green. You know, mm -hmm. it's yeah, like it gets a forest or whatever. Exactly, it gets a forest. Uh, you're you can tap for two green instead of one stuff like that. I, I like that idea of green being ramp. Uh, just more mana, but not different colored mana, and right. being able to get different colored mana and other things. Uh, so I'm, I, I I'm happy with it. I there are some things that I didn't notice, and of course, duh. But playing the cards help you <laughs> notice those things. But uh, it's been great. I'm gonna keep playing limited until I don't have any gems left. So. And you know what? Every game I play seems to involve both dungeons and dragons. The, so. Yeah. It, they <laughs> definitely hit that very well. And I would like, okay, one last thing. Maybe not. Pro probably not the last thing, but one thing I'm going to say. <laughs> the, the, the dungeons, don't forget, if your opponent is, hasn't ventured yet and you're counting combat damage, if they venture, it's one extra damage. Just remember that because they can nice. choose to make you lose one extra life. I have died many times from forgetting that oh, when that attacks, it ventures, but that's fine. They're just going to scry or gain a life. No, it's going to be the extra one life I needed to lose. Nope, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill me. Kill it now. Kill it Don't now. Don't let it go to attacks. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that is important. Also, uh, the same for you. If you're sitting and your opponent has one life, I think for four or five turns, I sat with kick in the door in my hand, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I just have to draw a creature to give it haste to attack. And then I was like, wait a second. I can just venture and kill them right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it took me like a very long time of just us drawing lands and playing them and me waiting to get something else i was like i could have ended this game like four turns ago <laughs> i don't know why. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's 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 what i have to say about limited so far um but i'll probably just continue to do that forever uh as usual i i always like playing a ton a ton of limited at the beginning of a set yeah same so or i usually do yeah. Last couple have been an exception, actually. But this one I'm enjoying. I'm just out of resources. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta like play some standard 2022, build up some more gold, and then, and then get back then in. Then I can draft again. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, Jeff, do you want to get into some constructed? Do you think? Or, or I mean, you said you haven't been playing much of it, so I could just quickly say kind of what I've been seeing. I mean, I've played a little. I've, I've played a little. Okay. You know. But you, okay. you could go ahead. You, you, you know more. I'll, I'll jump on, on, on the So back. I've been playing Rakdos, obviously, because that's, uh, that's awesome. Rakdos mm -hmm. mid-range. Uh, and I've been playing kind of like a Magecraft build, where I've built it around um, the Witch, Sedgemore Witch. Mm -hmm. Your favorite. Uh, and then I have Magmatic Channeler as the other payoff for, for having a bunch of spells. Uh, and then the big dragon that sacks stuff to... Like, it, it eats all the pest tokens, and gets bigger and gets indestructible or whatever uh yeah from call time yeah uh and that's been really fun and it's been it felt like it's been pretty competitive um but what you'll notice if you jump on is a lot of prismari dragons seems to be the de facto best deck um which is not surprising i mean i think once ever eldraine rotates and all that stuff rotates i think goldspan dragon is the you know most obvious candidate for best card in the format mm -hmm. And so then you're like, what's the best Goldspan Dragon deck? 
and probably it is Prismari Dragons, because you can ramp into it off of uh, Prismari Command uh, turn early, or you can back it up with Galazeth and all this stuff. So very strong deck. Uh, and it, the second best card is probably All Runs Epiphany in the format, so it's like just have the blue-red deck that plays both those cards. There you go. Um, yep. So you'll run into a lot of that. Uh, and then there's some mono-colored aggro decks, mostly mono-white and mono-green are both fairly popular. Mm-hmm. Because mono green got some some Bangers. non non trivial buffs. Bangers, from yeah. I'm gonna jump in because yeah. all I've been playing is mono green in 2022. Okay, there you go. That's the perfect springboard for you. Yeah, <laughs> and it has been just delicious. Oh gosh, I've been loving it. Um, yeah, like every creature in your deck is like two or three green pips. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the werewolf, right? Yeah. So you get to play the... Are, are you playing ranger class? I'm playing ranger class. Um, I'm playing the werewolf. You get to play the uh, the, the troll from uh, Call Time. The yep. three mana, four, Old four trample. Troll. Um, Old growth troll, yeah. And uh, and then I'm also playing um, Gnarled Professor. The uh, oh, two green like green. That. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the five, four with trample. Because uh, then you're just like, you know, turn two, three, three, turn three, four, four, turn four, five, four. And you're just what like... What do you usually go get? So there... I think the options aren't awesome, but like you do have mm-hmm. some things you can grab, obviously. But um, I mean, towards the end, you, you can always just get mascot exhibition. You're like, okay, cool. I can do that. True. Yeah, um, throw one of those in there. And, and every once in a while, uh, you need to go get like the, uh, the disenchant. To kill like a portable yeah. hole or something uh, right. that took out one of your your people. Well, then maybe the the plus two plus two and vigilance or two plus one plus one counters yeah. and vigilance card is probably okay. Expanded anatomy works pretty well, especially because you have trample, so that's nice. You're just like suit up mm-hmm. the big one. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been fun. Like the play patterns seems fairly uh, like similar all the time, but like all your creatures are just huge. It's just and they're that all that makes cheap. sense, especially in best of one too. Mm-hmm. You might as well use your sideboard slots. For by playing at least one lesson card. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the yeah the 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 lessons in the sideboard. Yeah. So the um, I have just one of it's a one of uh, all the ones I could basically yeah play seven card toolbox useful. Or yeah. Even environmental sciences because every once in a while you're like I just need one more land and a little bit of life would be nice. Um, totally. But yeah. Any planeswalkers? Uh, I haven't been playing with any planeswalkers. Um, Mainly because I don't like them very much. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some people trying out Ellie Wick. Yeah, it didn't seem great to me, but yeah. So Ellie Wick seems more interesting in the kind of uh, green focused, but like legend green focused legendary matters deck. Yeah. Um, so I saw some people playing that where they're like playing um, Bard class which is the Gruel one, and every time you play a legendary spell, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and right, then it right, costs yeah. Gruel less and that, that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, that seems pretty interesting. Um, I was actually surprised. So you were telling me about Prismari Dragons, and I only saw it, like, a couple times, but the one that I ran into almost every game was just Mono Red Goblins. Wow. So this is, this is my experience with this. It's been very strange because... <laughs> Mono Red Goblins has access to cards that are not in standard currently or standard in 2022. They're just the arena cards you can play in best of one. Right. So they're playing like the Raging Goblin, or I guess maybe it's called something else. Um, and they, you also get Goblin like Taskmaster or Trash, what is it? The it, It's like a lower Trash Master. Trash Master. Yeah, and you can like... Uh, one that kills artifacts. Yeah, kills artifacts. It's like, oh, this is just an arena best of one card you can play? Oh. I didn't know that. So I've been like, yeah, I didn't know that either until I was like, wait, what is... How do you... How are you playing these cards? Um, so it's that's been kind of strange to me where I, I don't play best of one and now I'm running into these best of one cards that I didn't think were... It, 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 it takes it a little out of the, oh, this is standard 2022 because... The, it's, this isn't a deck I'm going to run into in the standard 2022 unless I'm playing best of one. So that's been very in, strange. That's that's good to know. I, I ran into goblins one time and their draw was like real bad. Ooh. So I kind of just just destroyed them. And so then I felt like that was just one person testing out a mean deck. 
kind of. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, goblins is a thing. You know, it's good to know they have access to lords you might not be thinking about. Exactly. You're like, oh, that's a lord I didn't know they had. So. Yeah. One thing that is cool is that Insight Esports over the weekend actually held a standard 2022 tournament. And I actually played in it. Oh, cool. Uh, you'll be happy to know that Mono Green won that event. Ooh, yeah, baby. <laughs> I didn't see if they had gnarled professors or not. Um, but the deck was, or the tournament was about 40% Prismari Dragons. Okay. And then maybe 10 to 15% Mono Green. And then every other deck was like a one or two of. Uh, I actually think there were two other Rakdos pilots. So there were three Rakdos <laughs> mid-range decks in the event. How did you, you ever heard of an O2 you drop? Is that a, a oh. term you're familiar with? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no. So it's not, it's not as bad as it sounds. But if you've heard of the term O2 drop, mm -hmm. I actually pulled the much rarer 2O drop. Oh, okay. <laughs> because uh, basically Julia was out shopping with a friend. And so then I was like, hey, that's, that's fine. I'll just play in this tournament that I heard about that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple of matches in, they messaged me being like, hey, we're going to go get a late lunch in this patio and, and grab a couple of beers. Are you interested in that? And then I saw, you know, it was a beautiful day, and I decided, yeah, I'll just do that. And I'll, you know, I could play a, a tournament anytime. Exactly. So I'll have more opportunities for that. But just getting out on a nice day when oh. the patio was recently opened felt like it made more sense. So yeah, it just must have looked a little strange from the outside of the 2-0 <laughs> what, what happened? Did, did he just... <laughs> just... <laughs> the opponents were too weak for me yeah. so I decided this tournament wasn't worth my time <laughs> uh, um, but I did play two very close and very fun matches one was against a homebrew Orzov midrange which was really cool it had like Kaya's and, yeah, and stuff at the top I have played against something that must have been looking at that list because yeah. <laughs> that was rough uh, that was real close because it was just two midrange mm -hmm. you know, people duking it out lots of check for traps were slinging back and forth <laughs> Uh, so that was fun. And then a really razor thin like margins game against Mono Green in the second round that mm. I I managed to just squeeze him out with my flying dragon uh, to the point where t on the turn before I was about to win in order to survive at one I had to animate my man land and block. Wow. <laughs> Tried to chump block with my land. So that's uh, Which one was it? Was it the bugbear or was it the uh, hive eye? Hive the hive. Yeah. Hive. Three, three. Yeah. Hive of the Eye Tyrant, that's what it's called. Yeah. Well, nice. That's awesome. I mean, it's yeah, it was super hilarious. The format seems pretty good. We're winning and just dropped, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, fuck that. Were you playing best of one? It was best of three. Okay. Yeah. So I had to like scramble together a sideboard because my deck just didn't have one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I put in, you know, all the cards that are like, there's the black one that is really good against white creatures, mm -hmm. rave enfeeblement or whatever. Yeah. And then the red one is good, good against, against green, green creatures. creatures burning which hands. really helped me out in the second uh, match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe that will be the reason that Mono Green Stompy has a really hard time against Prismari because they're like, um, burning hands, deal five, deal five, or six, whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's super good against them. Mm -hmm. so, because a lot of their stuff's just huge. But this and, is, but you have a two damage removal spell. Or, or two, two mana removal spell. Exactly. So... Um, I mean, it is also a two damage removal. Spell, yeah, but not against that. <laughs> exactly, but dang. Anyway, it's that's been a lot of fun. So I'm really excited to start playing and brewing with, you know, standard 2022 when we can do full best of three and all that stuff. Um, totally. But until then, I don't know if I'll be brewing very much uh, for this current standard. Sorry. It just feels time. super weird because you drop something with two toughness on turn two and then you're like, oh no, mm -hmm. and you like cross your fingers. Then you're oh no, wait, there's no bone crusher giant yeah. anymore. You're like, I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> like if they kill it, they kill it. It's not a two for one anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, dang. Uh, but yeah, so that's been uh, super great. I am, well, real quick, Jeff, do you have any last thoughts before we go to a beer break? Nope, I think my Bone Crusher Giant was my last All right, perfect. But it's just nice to not have to play against that card anymore. Yeah, well, how about we crush some more beers? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Whatever, but let's go to a beer break. Mm. Octopus wants to fight me. So actually, this beer reminds me a lot of uh, our weekly draft and drafts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was a, a staple there. Yeah, 
I don't know how many times I actually had it, but I knew a couple of our friends would order it like every time. And I remember thinking, yeah. what is this thing? Everyone keeps Still talking about the octopus that wants to fight. I was like, <laughs> it was just surprising to me, but um, yeah, I haven't had it in a while. No, I think that might have been like the last time I had it was at <laughs> yeah. one of those events. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually might be, um, might be true. Sweet. All right. So we are now going to go into, as always, our worth a slot segment. So in our yeah. first sips episodes, we always like to decide, you know, maybe there's a few cards that are worth a slot in your deck uh, in standard or historic, but usually standard. Um, and so we, what we basically do is uh, we'll go back and forth talking about the cards we think that uh, are worth a slot and we debate whether they are or not. Uh, usually mm -hmm. it is three cards and you choose whether, um, well, so you, you have three cards. One of them is a layup, one of them's a three pointer and one of them's a half court kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, the first one is for sure. That's, you know, going to be worth a slot. And the other ones are like, you, you can take a little bit more liberty. So we're just not talking about all the cards everybody else is talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just trying to pick, uh, you know, at least one or two cards that have a really good shot at mm -hmm. cracking competitive standard play. And then a few fun ones that, you know, we would love to, to be a part of the metagame, but, uh, you know, can't say for sure. Exactly. Jeff, do you want to go first? <clears throat> All right. Are we starting? Which, which way are we starting? Start with the layups? No, yeah, well, let's start with the layups because, you know, that's what everyone's expecting. Okay. Um, so this is a card that I want to talk about, and I don't know if it's a layup, but I think it's very, very powerful. It's one of the more powerful cards in the set, and so it has the, the chance to revitalize an old faithful archetype and so mentioned this a little bit in context of my draft deck but i want to talk about imrith desert doom so this is the blue legendary dragon mm -hmm. it's three blue blue for a five five with flying that has ward four as long as it's untapped and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you draw a card and it, if you had fewer than three cards in hand you draw equal to the difference so to me, I want to play this card in a control deck, right? This is the kind of classic control finisher. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that I think control's kind of been missing. You know, control's been pretty much dead in recent years. Like it's just not, it's a combination of it's not doing more powerful things than the mid-range decks were doing. So it doesn't even necessarily win the long game. But then it also doesn't win the early game because it's slower. It's reactive instead of proactive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that, you know, once this standard rotation happens, we can see a rebirth of control, traditional control in the metagame. Uh, and I think this card would be a big reason for it. You just need that five mana threat that you can tap out for uh, without worrying about it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what this provides. And once this gets going, you know, it fuels your hand. You have constant counter spells and removal spells. Basically, your hand is full for the rest of the game, and your opponent doesn't have long to live once this thing, you know, starts whacking them for five. So it closes the game out quickly. You're able to tap out for it without worrying too much about it. Mm -hmm. And then it keeps you stocked with more answers uh, as it kind of wins the game for you. Reminds me a bit of, like, Teferi Hero of Dominaria in that, in that vein where it's going to keep you stocked mm. and also win the game for you. Yeah. Plus, with all of the mid-range stuff, you know, with the power level of the format really lowering significantly with all the, these strong cards rotating out, that means control can actually have a chance again. Because the part of the problem, like I said, is these adventure decks are so fast and can kill you quickly, but they also outgrind you because they have more card advantage. You know? Yeah. Like, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can fight against this one because this, uh, this card seems really sweet, and I, I think you're, what you're thinking... It, it, is exactly where it needs to go. Because um, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, I don't know if, you know, Prismari Dragons is going to play it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but the control match for sure, because then you're just attacking, and you're, you know, filling your hand with counter spells and um, everything else that you need to just, like, keep being able to just smack them in the face for five every turn. So, uh, yeah, I think I think you're right. That, that feels like th this could definitely be something, like, give maybe, yeah, one of those control decks... Um, 
maybe Demir Control has been working really hard on trying to. I'm kind of hoping get blue white with like four, all the four tell cards. You know, you can and finally Doomscar get Doom Scar and... into, into the mm -hmm. into the meta game. I mean, I would love that. I feel yeah. like I might see it more in uh, Demir, but. Um, but the other thing is, like Fortel plays really well with this card because you get them out of your hand, and right? Then you can draw back up to three, but without actually getting rid of all your cards, right? So you can like foretell two counter spells and a draw spell, attack with this, draw three cards, and then still have a counter spell up. You know? Actually, no. Yeah, that does make a lot more sense. That's great. Yeah, with the foretell thing. Yeah. No. That sounds awesome. So I'm, I'm imagining a blue-white foretell deck with this guy, you know, maybe three three copies of it at the five as the finisher. Yeah. Dang. Nope, that sounds like, sweet. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Prismari Dragons played it as, like, Goldspan Dragon number five and six. Mm -hmm. You know, just the ramp out a five-mana awesome dragon one turn ahead of schedule. Obviously, we'd prefer it's Goldspan Dragon, but, you know... I can only play four copies of that, so I'll yeah. jam this, you know, one or two of these in there. Or this is just that. like, oh, let me go get, let me go find my gold span. So I hit with this on one turn, and then I find my gold span, and then I hit totally. you with that. Yep. Because a lot of that deck's power level is going to come from turn three, end step, Prismari Command, kill your two toughness creature and make a treasure, and then untap, play a five mana dragon. Yeah. And so they might just be in the market for an extra five mana dragon or two. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think you're right. I like that. Very cool card. And for those who remember, you know, I played during Dragons of Tarkir. If you played against Dragon Lord Ojitai, you you know a bit what it's like to play against this card. This is, I think, fairly obviously a powered down version of, of Ojitai because Ojitai had hexproof instead of Ward Four when it was untapped, and it would look at the top three and pick any one when it hit instead mm -hmm. of draw a card. Um, but I think this might have more power. I think Ojitai was a 4-5. Um, but that card was awesome and, and made Dragon, like Esper Dragon's control became an archetype all because of that card. So hoping something similar can happen here. Yeah. No. Uh, I think you're right. I think that's great. And it blocks Goldspan Dragon, baby. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, very, very profitably. Um, hmm. All right. For my layup, I think... I'm going to go with the one... All right. I know we talked about this last week, but I'm just going to go with this one. Um, mm -hmm. So I am going to pick Ranger class. Uh, okay. So it's one in a green. Uh, it's a class, so it's an enchantment that enters the battlefield. And when it does, you get a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. Then you can pay one in a green to uh, make it go to level two. And whenever you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature. And then you can play three in a green, and uh, you can look at the top card of your library at any time. And then you can cast creature spells off the top of your library. Um, so I just like this as a nice... Like, I th really think it'll, it'll see play in... Mono Green Stompy, just because it's an enchantment that's going to be doing things for you, except for it also gives you the creature that you need, plus making like your, um, you can play this on two, then play on turn three, Old Growth Troll. Turn four, you can play, you can pump this up to level two and then play another two drop, and then you attack mm -hmm. for five trample. Uh, feels nice. And then after that, you just get to put the counter wherever you want, and usually on your trample creatures. Um, for the time being, the counter will be really nice because then Heartless Act gets, uh, gets not, uh, you know, can't just destroy your stuff. Um, we'll right. see after that uh, how awesome that is, but I really love the ability to later in the game when you're starting to run out of threats to just be able to, all right, well, I'm going to bring this up to level three and just start looking for creatures. And sometimes you can just like blast a bunch off the top of your deck, um, mm -hmm. just one after the other. Uh, now that you know, going into I, everything I think is just going into <laughs> after rotation. So all I'm thinking is these decks won't have the ability to, um, uh, uh, what's the giant, awesome green artifact from throne of Eldraine? Uh, great Henge. Great Henge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did I, I already <laughs> forgot what great Henge was. Um, right. So this will be a way to be able to play a bunch of creatures and get value off the top of your library where you won't have that card anymore. Um, I don't know. I think that we're going to see it here. And then also, um, we can see play in some of those plus one, plus one counter decks. I think it'll be able to, to, to get some of them there. 
Um, I think it's some like Grackma stuff might be might be plausible. Isn't that the the Hydra from Zendikar that cares about plus one plus one counters? Oh, like one green black. Uh, maybe yeah, that could be cool. Um, I I think it can do do some work for sure, uh, especially if you're like doubling up some of those. So um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I think Ranger class is total garbage, and I don't know why you would even. Think that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this card, I, I love this card. Mm -hmm. I think it's very cool. I played against, like I said, in that tournament, I, my second match was against Mono Green, and my opponent just had um, Swarm Shambler, then this on two, and then on turn three, leveled this up and played another Swarm Shambler. And now the counters make me not able to target his stuff, their stuff effectively, because they'll get these, all these insect tokens. Mm -hmm. So it plays really nicely with that one drop as well. I don't know if you're playing a Swarm Shambler. I day, was, yeah. yeah. It was really strong with this, because every creature then gets the protection of Swarm Shambler, mm -hmm. as long as it's able to attack. Uh, and just giving green the ability to kind of squeeze this in whenever they have the two extra mana, like, mm -hmm. really helps out some of their draws, because some of their draws are, like, you know, all two drops. Yeah. And like you said, you know, it's so great on turn four to be able to squeeze in this level up with, with your two drop and not feel like you wasted mana. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, the late game. Without Great Hands, you need another late game engine of some sort. Uh, and I, I'm totally with you. I'm the whole th This whole discussion is going to be in the context of, like, Throne of Eldraine is rotating. <laughs> yeah, <up>. exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the people saying that this set is weak, I think that's really overstated. I think there is a lot of power in this set. It's just like everything pales in comparison to Throne of Eldraine. Like yeah. That set was ridiculous. So. <laughs> exactly. It's like, like the cards in this set ask you to actually do something. And if you do what they're asking, then they'll reward you with power. And then Throne of Eldraine asks nothing of you. It just gave you extremely powerful cards. Yeah. Also, I think like power is, you know, kind of uh, relies on the context of what's around it. And because we have Eldraine it really overshadows some stuff. But if we didn't have a drain yeah. to look at, you could just, the the comparisons would be so much closer because then you're just looking at Zendikar and Kaldheim and Strixhaven, basically. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I actually like this card as your two drop, even in a Throne of Eldraine world, because you don't feel like you got totally two for one by Bonecrusher Giant. Exactly. Like, okay, yeah, you traded your stomp for my wolf token. My card does more things than that. Your card does, does more things than that. Like, you're probably coming out a little ahead in that mm -hmm. uh, exchange, but not by as much as you usually are. Yeah. Like, I'm still going to get value out of this Ranger class. You didn't just totally waste my two-drop with a stomp. Yeah. And so, yeah, this card's just uh, really powerful. And one thing I like a lot about it is it gives Mono Green a little more play to it. So instead of, like, play my big thing and attack with everything every turn, uh, the leveling up system actually asks you to kind of say, oh... Should I level up or should I play this three drop or what mm -hmm. should I do? You know, it gives you more options and gives the deck a little more, a little more play. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, N nice words. All right, so those uh, both those cards are uh, definitely worth a slot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, signed off by the arena regulars, worth a slot. That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, what, what's your next card? Okay, so my next card is a card that I love and. Uh, I've already kind of told you about it, but I don't think I've brought it up on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a card I've been playing two copies of in my Rakdos deck, and I keep feeling like I want more. This is Zariel, Archduke of Avernus. Mm. So this is the red Planeswalker from the set. By the way, I love how it like, has that core set feel where there's one Planeswalker in each color. Yeah, I like that too. That's nice. Yeah. At first, when they kept coming out in previews, I was like, another Planeswalker? And then it was like, oh, right, it's kind of like a core set. There's one in each color, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Um, so this is the red one. It's two red red. The plus one is creatures you control get plus one, plus one, gain haste until end of turn. For zero, it creates a one, one devil that when it dies, it deals one damage to any target. And for minus six, you get an emblem that at the end of your first combat phase, untap a creature you control. After this phase, you get an additional combat phase. And it comes in with four loyalty. So I've really loved this deck in my Rakdos deck that has some sacrifice synergies. You make uh, you make the devil mm -hmm. right away. It's almost always what you do, right? Yeah. Uh, like sometimes you plus one immediately just to get in a bit more damage. But generally you play this, you make a devil, 
Those devils, if you've ever played against Tybalt in War of the Spark, you know how annoying these devils are. They they look kind of innocuous, but then they just they chump your biggest thing and shoot down your one toughness blocker so, or attacker or something. Like they just they trade with two toughness creatures. It's, they're just super annoying. They're super annoying. And especially when you pump them up and attack with them, and then they trade with three toughness blockers. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, they're super, super annoying. I've never actually used the ultimate, because usually you're just making devils, or you're winning the game with the plus one or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but the plus one, I think, is really powerful, too. If this survives, then there are so many creatures that really ought not have haste, you know, because the design team intentionally did not give them haste. Yeah. And... Uh, when they have haste, they feel a bit stupid. Um, the one that I can think of is that dragon that I mm-hmm. I was talking about. I, I cannot remember the name for the life of me. Immerstrom oh, Predator. Immerstrom Predator, yeah. That thing really shouldn't have haste. <laughs> and when it does, you know, it just cranks in for five, and, you, and it's indestructible, and you're like, well, I'm fucked. Yeah. Um, and then one of the games I won recently with this card was I had it in play, and my opponent decided not to kill it. The reason they did that is because they knew I had another one in hand because they had kind of thought seized me or mm-hmm. whatever. And so they decide, okay, I'll go for you and try to win the race. But then on, I had a Sedgemore Witch in play as well. So on my turn, I you know, killed their thing, played another spell, and like made three, overall made three pass tokens, gave them all plus one, plus oh, and attacked for ten. It, was just like, <laughs> it just felt oh, ridiculous. God. So. In these kind of sacrifice strategies where you're generating pest tokens or, or whatever and, and even any leftover devil tokens you might have, that, that plus one is really powerful because you just make all these pests, plus one, and now they all have haste, and then you're attacking with you know, three or four two-power attackers. So This card has really impressed me, and I want to I try it out a bit more. But uh, I think if, if red-based sacrifice strategies like red-black sacrifice strategies are around this is going to be at the very least a sideboard option but i think just a just a mainstay of those decks yeah um i have to say to be honest i did not read this card until you sent me your deck list um because i was like what is this um (laughs) and yeah i think you were right like when you look at it initially it feels fairly innocuous like you're just oh okay so you you pump a power and uh, haste okay and then you make a little one one all right um but definitely the way that you're breaking it down it makes a lot of sense uh anytime there's a cheap planeswalker that can make a creature and you don't have to minus i they're gonna be great you know i really like any yeah like this thing is hard to kill exactly more loyalty and makes a devil blocker without going down you know like right. the spider queen you have to go down bring her to one loyalty to make spiders yeah so Often you're like chump blocking with both spiders to get her back up to three or whatever, and, and then, then you, untapping with mana. Yeah, so is the idea exactly. Um, so I do like this, and you know, people really don't give haste enough credit. Man, that no, haste has got to be one of the strongest keywords, and also like rated the lowest by it, players. Yeah, you know? it's uh, it's very good because mm-hmm. you, you know, obviously having known or having more information than your opponent is always good. And knowing that you can attack in, they don't have time to react. Like they, mm-hmm. they're thinking, oh well, you can only attack with what's on the board or whatever. Um, this just changes everything. Now they have to think of, <laughs> just like, crap. Like, I, how do you attack into this thing? Because you know that you, the crackback is going to be so horrible. <laughs> like, um, that's the thing. It feels like you have to commit resources to try to kill it mm-hmm. because the plus one can be so deadly depending on what's in their hand. But if you make an all-out attack and I just chump with my devil or something and keep it alive even at one, then you're taking yeah. so much damage on the roof. Yeah, the turn you might not even survive. So, um, yeah, I uh, now that, like, with that package, I think this could definitely be... Uh, uh, it can be a player. I don't know if we're going to see it a ton um, because we... No, because- w- w- it will really depend on whether these sacrifice strategies really get into the, the standard meta. Um, I would love it if they did. Uh, We just haven't, we've seen them kind of peter up, um, but they haven't been like, you know, the big deck that we're seeing. But if it it does become a deck, I think this could be uh, one of the cards that is going to be floating around. Maybe like like a one of, two of in the main deck. Um, Yeah. Or like, I have it at right now. Yeah, maybe like, yeah, exactly. Or maybe like a sideboard. Although giving Magmatic Channeler 
plus one, plus zero in haste, it's pretty sweet. Mm. I've done it with two channelers that slap down as four fours and then give them plus one, plus one, oh, in haste. It's like, my opponent's got to be sitting there like, how did I die? How, how, did, how did that happen? <laughs> you only had four mana. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that sound, that seems awesome. Also with uh, Sedgemore Witch, because it has Menace, that's really nice too. Yeah, not in for bad four. with her haste either. I like that. Um, so yeah, I think... I think you put this at a good spot where it, uh, we might see it uh, either... It, it does ask something of you, yes. right? This is kind of what I was saying, where the set has high power level cards that actually ask something of you. It's the big difference between yeah. this and the past. Uh, this doesn't just generically good in any deck that can cast it. Yeah, it's not... We're not going to see this in just, like, red decks. It's like, oh, a deck that's playing yeah. red, it, it's going to have this. Um, like, yeah, I don't know, I'm not playing Jeskai Control, and this is just powerful enough on its own. Like, I have to be playing creatures to exactly. care about this. Yeah, because you, know? yeah, you need the, um, the haste. The plus one has to do something, so. Totally. Um, but I think it is, the power level is there if you are already in that market. If you're already looking to play, like, cheap token-based strategies, mm -hmm. or, you know, big powerful cards that uh, Wizards intentionally left haste off of because it'd be too good with haste. And, yeah, exactly. And also the best part of the card is that her weapon goes up over her name. In the, yeah. <laughs> in the frame. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, because you're just going over of Avernus? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Archduke of Avernus. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I do like when they do that. They kind of have the, uh, the art kind of popping out of the frame a little bit. Every once in a while. Yeah. And this is the, the only one I can think of in recent time that, like, actually obscures the text. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Like, I don't even think I see the E in Archduke. I just know it has to be there. Because what other, what other yeah. word is that? Turns out it's Archduca mm -hmm. or something. I would never know. Yeah. Um, sweet. Yeah, so we, so that's definitely, I think I think we could see we could see that if, if the, the Sacrifice decks uh, get there. And, like, maybe a sideboard card in Mono Red or something. Yeah. Yeah, just to get, you know, if you have tons of creatures, it becomes a token thing. Uh, paying four mana to give an anth or you know pumping your team by one is going to be enough. I can see that. Yeah, like if you're playing against control, you know, mm -hmm. having this out to just generate tokens until they deal with it. Exactly. Um, and if they don't deal with it, you could also just hold the cards in your hand and then play like one drop, one drop, two drop, give it all haste. You're dead. Yeah, and one turn. Ooh, that is good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I like that one too. Um, my next one. Is just going to be another freaking monocolored card <laughs> that I want to make a monocolored deck work. Um, well, most of the cards in this set are monocolored. Sorry, I meant like this card goes in a monocolored deck, probably. Ah, okay, it's monocolored beat deck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to go with Guardian of Faith. This is one white, white for a 3 2 Spirit Knight with Flash and Vigilance. And it says, I know you were going to pick a white card. <laughs> when Guardian of Faith enters the battlefield, any number of other target creatures you control phase out. Mm -hmm. So I think this can be a really great role player in the mono white strategy. Um, yeah. A lot of those cards won't be rotating out when we go to rotation. And that deck really needs protection against uh, board wipes, and specifically Shadow's Verdict. And this is exactly what you need. Right. Like, right. So when you phase out, they come back. When when do they come back? On your upkeep. On your next upkeep. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. So not even when this goes away. So it's not like um, you play this, you exile everything, then you kill it and they come back. They will just be gone no matter what until your next turn. It's like this guy's just taking the heat of the Shadow's Verdict. He's exactly. Just, he's just eating it himself. And the great thing about this is that if things are equipped, if things have counters, if things are tokens, they all come back with those things still on them because right. they phased Unlike out. Unlike the flicker versions of this we've seen in the Correct. Past. So uh, if you're in mono white, they're playing the, uh, what is it, the hammer that you know gives you flying and all that stuff. There's a lot of equipment that goes around. There's a lot of tokens uh, that you're generating by playing two spells, things like that. You can save everything. Like... Like you have Mall of the Skyclaves on something. Exactly. Right? It'll come back with it on it. Um, everything will, it just kind of like, everything just vanishes for a, for a little bit and then comes back. Um, yeah. 
and they this is one of the most powerful versions of this we've seen yes like they've made a lot of these cards like glorious protector from call time for example mm -hmm. where the idea is you flash it in to stop removal but this is much better than glorious protector this is much better um i i, I think it's great because it you know it literally it's the card that hoses shadow's verdict which i love because that card <laughs> i hate that fuck card. that card <laughs> fuck that card man <laughs> Um, it's a really good card, but it, it always is destroying the decks I want to play. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see that white gets to do this awesome, perfect way of like, this is the best way to save your shit. Like, totally. you don't really have to spare on much at all. Mainly, I guess maybe the only thing is that, no, even when it comes back, it, it can still attack, right? When it phases out. Yeah. It's so... Um, the only thing worth mentioning is it's not strictly worse than the mass blink because like Paolo won't re-trigger. That, that is correct. Okay, so you you won't, yeah, so your Paolos or any of your ETBs won't do that. Um, your your Skyclave apparitions aren't going to like uh, mm -hmm. do anything. However, I don't know, actually I don't know that ruling. If you, if you phase out your Skyclave apparition, does it give them the token? And then it comes back, or because it just phases out. Does it actually like? Because it, it doesn't, doesn't leave. leave the battlefield, so I don't. So think that so. it doesn't. Because it um, says until Skyclave Apparition leaves the battlefield or something. And this does it. it this just phases it. It depends exactly what Skyclave Apparition says. I think it says when it leaves the battle battlefield. So, if that's the case, yeah, then um, when it leaves the battlefield. Yeah. So that's great because you're playing Skyclave Apparition. The only sad thing is you know Paolo doesn't trigger again, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's like your only. ETB only that one doesn't work but besides you know isn't all upside exactly this, but paulo can still attack which you wouldn't be able to if he was blinked exactly so um yeah i i like it i think this might you know give both of the cards i chose were like give a little bit more juice to the monocolor decks um mm -hmm. and uh i like to see it it's it's uh yeah i think it'll be honestly good. my only concern is that it's just a three drop and you have Paolo, you have Skyclave Apparition, you have Redain, God of the Worthy, you have Maul of the Skyclaves. So you're going to have to like really figure out what the best mix of all these amazing three drops that you have in, mm -hmm. access to in Mono White. Yeah. Because you can't play all three drops. Um, but at the very least, sideboard card against decks that play uh, Wraths yeah. of any sort, really. Um, and probably at least one or two main deck as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, like, Redain had a similar role where she would be making the Wrath more expensive. Yeah, but it's, like, imminent. Um, so it's probably, like, a split between Redain and this. And deciding. I don't... It will depend, because you like Redain in, um, against, like, some aggro strategies, uh, like, red and stuff, because you can play the shield and it really helps out. Um, and also, like, the snow... The Snowland tap the, actually kind of fucks them up. That's true. <laughs> So, so yeah, I think... But then I, again, this card is better against single target removal than Redain, because you don't have to do this in response to a board wipe. This still fizzles a, a single target yeah, removal it's just spell. Any number. So, also, at the very least, it's just a 3-2 a Vigilance that, like, has pseudo haste, because you get to play it on the end of their turn. Um, yeah, totally. So... And I'm sure that, like, this is a, a strong enough ability that I'm sure there's applications that are not obvious right away but that will come up later where you're like oh actually phasing this out actually stops this yeah um yeah the only sad thing about it is that it's a knight instead of a warrior <laughs> yeah they, they've done that so many times in this set like i wanted to make a white black venture into the dungeon party deck mm -hmm. but all the good white black venture into the dungeon cards are randomly knights instead of warriors yeah like, Fuck you. They really they okay. So real quick, we're gonna t put a pause on the worth a slot <laughs> section at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> they really fucked us with that party thing. Like, yeah, we didn't get anything. Not even close. Like, I for a little bit, I was thinking, oh maybe there's like, oh here's some rogues in like red and stuff. No, they, no, they yeah. It's not. There's no party deck. There's no. Probably. It's never gonna be a thing. Um, sorry to be a party pooper, but it's not happening. Ah. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. Uh, I think Watsi was the party pooper. Yeah, here. they decided that they they we like thought it was a you know that's a home run slam dunk right there. Hey, you know yeah. September we're gonna give you the party theme. Then you can be excited for it for July. Nope, 
I couldn't Nadar selfless paladin have been a dragon warrior. Wouldn't that be a thing that's possible? Why can't they just have more warriors? I don't know. That's a class, right? Isn't it? Warrior is a class. Uh, well, there's like fighter. Ugh. Fighters. Yeah. All right. I thought warrior was. Oh, like, right. Those could ease. Like, is fighter even a, a magic thing? No, they just made them all knights. Yeah, they just made them knights. They could have been warriors. Like a war. Whatever. Uh, yeah. And then we got like rangers and shamans, which are great. And druids, yeah. Well, I mean, you need those in, in the D&D set, but, like, I don't know. How's there not going to be a ton of wizards in the D&D set? They're, they're, so they, I was looking at some of the wizards. Um, so Aserarek, Aserarek, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was going to go in my white-black Venture into the Dungeon party aggro deck. Yeah. Because he was a wizard and a, and a payoff for venturing into the dungeon. Um, but then none of the other cards that <laughs> that were constructed playable and ventured into a dungeon had the right types to go to yeah. make this a real deck. So, yeah, I'm just like, mwah, mwah. oh well. Kind of makes me sad about that. You know, we have been talking about this for a long time, so it's it's a bit of a like bummer. The white to... black one that has death touch and first strike and ventures that really just needed to be a warrior. Uh, just a, a party member, yeah. Yeah, any party member would have been fine. literally just any party member. But it's a human knight. So, anyway, um, that's our, our random little pity party, I guess. <laughs> for that. Um, I'm sure there's a reason. Maybe they tried it and it was just not what they wanted to be. I guess, powerful, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would love to hear them talk about that and why they decided not to. Because it really seems like that was straightforward, but... Totally. Anyway. Would it, like, tie this set together, too? Yeah. And it's with, like we've been waiting for almost all year for the party deck to come together. And, and it would also be like, hey, now we're establishing what the next standard is going to be. We have a strong thing that ties two sets together. Um, they, they've they been doing little things with that uh, throughout, just kind of, you know, adding more life gain to green so that you can have this, like, you know, green, black, green, maybe this Abzan life gain deck almost different things uh, right. but or i mean not necessarily standard playable but at least like it ties some of the the sets together so it almost feels like it's a block but um whether like si the colors are doing similar things but anyway um it, well, also in general i just like pushing multicolor aggro because it multicolor aggro already has a, such an inherent disadvantage versus monocolored aggro yeah that I like pushing the power level on, on multicolor aggro a little bit, so mm -hmm. it's not just every aggro deck is monocolored. Yeah, because this Triumphant Adventurer, this card is, I'm just going to read it, it's uh, white-black for a 1-1 one, one human knight with death touch, and as long as it's your turn, it has first strike. And then whenever it mm -hmm. attacks, it ventures into the dungeon. This card's Might as well sweet. say unblockable on it. Yeah. So nobody's blocking this thing. You can't block Played this thing. Played a yeah. draft match against somebody who had two of these, and it was turn two, turn three. And I was like, well, I guess I'm fucked. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> you have to have, like, magic missile or something. like. Yeah, I didn't have any of my removal spells, yeah. and I wasn't willing to double block and risk losing the game to a pump spell. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it seems awesome. So, yeah, I can absolutely see, like, trying to make this a Like, thing. that's a constructed playable card, and if that was a human warrior... You know, you go the one drop with the cleric that gets plus one plus oh for each party type, two drop this. Yeah. Um, then you have like a Sarah Rack or something, you know, like yeah, that's exactly. a real curve. Yeah, I don't. Do so, that. okay. Yeah, this is what bolts my bird. This is, this is the, I didn't say it before, <laughs> this bolts my bird. It, yeah. They bolted my bird saying, you know, you, in D&D, &D, you have a party. That's what it's called. It's your party. <laughs> and, and they just threw it in the trash. Oh, man. <laughs> there are no party cards in there the are set. no good party cards in the set but you, they could have even just they didn't even have to bring the mechanic back like i just wanted the no. creature types oh well like all of the party creature types appear on commons basically yeah that are just not constructed play or just a bunch of Kaldheim changelings that's what they <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> the party deck is called i'm changeling yeah. travel <laughs> oh man with random party payoffs exactly Ugh. all right um, also, real quick, I just love that they have uh, the, a card called True Polymorph, just to, yeah. just to dunk on us as if we haven't been polymorphing this whole time. They're like, sorry, the D&D &D <laughs> set comes out. This is the True Polymorph. The other one is fake. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's not what polymorph really does. Yeah, I wonder if there's like an actual spell in D and D called True Polymorph, or if the spell in D and D is called polymorph, polymorph, but there's already a magic card that's <laughs> called that, and so, so they, they call the True. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's what it feels like to me. I don't know if because like this changes the creature forever, right? So it's uh, four yeah. blue blue for an instant target artifact or creature becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature, and that's it. Um, cool, uh, but it's just hilarious. It's just, it's just hilarious. That it feels like they're really like <laughs> the polymorph we gave you before. That's not a true. That's not polymorph. a true polymorph. Uh, anyway, all right. Maybe rant over. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, Jeff, do you? No, I, I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff, do you have another card? Um, oh, there's so many good options for this. I know it's hard because cool now it feels like before I was like I don't know which ones I have and then. I said some interesting ones, and I don't want ones that are so similar, but there are some pretty sweet ones that I'm like, man, I wish this was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's so close. It's so, it's close. so close. I think I'll go with, you know what? Let's just let's just go with a, let's go with an absolute classic here, fan favorite. I'm gonna say Dritzt. Dritzt Doerden. Okay. So this is the three green white elf ranger three three. Double strike when it enters the battlefield, make a 4 1 legendary green cat creature token with trample. And whenever a creature dies but had power greater than Drizzt's power, put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the difference. Okay, so what do I like about this? Well, it's, it is a powerful card. The problem is five mana is a lot. Um, so I think if this is going to succeed, it's going to have to succeed in some sort of green white mid range deck, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's one possible home for it. Or the other one, and this is what I'm really holding out hopes for, and I talked about it a bit last week, is that elf, elves become a thing. And this could be, like, the top end of your elf deck. Because they already have, like, you know, Abzan elves, let's say. Mm-hmm. Because they already have that uh, saga that gets you a, an elf out of your graveyard, puts it into play. Like, this is a pretty powerful one to get off of that. Yeah. So I don't... I don't really expect to see much of this guy, but I think there there is an outside shot because the card itself will win the game very quickly. Mm-hmm. Like this is a power big power double striker of the fact that it grows. And like the four one has trample, so you don't feel that bad attacking with this and the four one. They block, take a bit of damage, and then this gets pumped because the cat has bigger power than it. Mm-hmm. And now you have a four four double striker, like I don't know, this is a lot of this is a lot of power on this card. It's just that, you know, it is a a five mana three three, like a five mana kind of sorcery speed play, mm-hmm. which hasn't been good enough in past standards. So I think maybe when things get powered down a bit, this could be a reasonable top end or, you know, to either a green white mid range deck or to an elf elf deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, it's such an iconic character. You know, you got to be rooting for him. That's true. It would be cool if uh, if there's like this sweet D and D character that just becomes like the face of Magic for a while, just because it's you know, like in a popular or strong deck. Sorry. Totally. Both. Both of those things, popular and strong. Um, yeah, I uh, I see this maybe less in an elf deck and almost more in this counters deck that I hope is still a thing. Um, Oh, that's a good point, too. Yeah, we can do, like, the, the Abzan counters. Yeah, because it almost seems like that might be a good home for it because um, I'm not 100% sure your other elves will be bigger than it. It would be nice if this can come down and then you attack with some things and then something might be killed or they you already have a big creature and now it's like, well, if you kill the big creature, this is going to get a bunch of counters and then I have some things that double counters, so... It's going to get mm-hmm. huge, and it's a double striker, and then you can't... It's out of range of being killed by certain things. Um, so, and maybe that deck gets a lot... I don't know. Well, I was mostly thinking this receives, like, an Elvish Warmaster pump really well. That is it's true. It plus two, plus two is huge. And then also Death Touch means that nothing it's will... Nothing. Fight. Nothing will tango with it. No, that is true. It does take that pump really well. Um, though it is so hard, the five mana three three is rough just because frostbite's a thing, and I'm mm-hmm. so that scares me. But but at least it, you know you you lost a huge mana advantage disadvantage, but you still got the four one. That's true. Yeah, no, you did get a four one. Okay, um, it is seven power 
and hits for 10. It's almost 10 power. Yeah, right? it's like, like 10 power. On an empty board. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it does seem like... I, I like where you put this because it does seem like a sweet card with lots of power, but mm -hmm. a little a little fragile. Um, but It's a long shot if you, take. Like, it yeah. has to be one of these decks where your removal is really taxed. There are other things you have to kill. And then I, you know, you you use all your frost bites on my other stuff, and then I slap this down, and yeah. it's like we gotcha. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you're right. It does feel, it does feel like a long shot, but it does feel worth like trying. Um, though I don't know if I feel comfortable spending a bunch of wild cards on this. Though it is legendary, so I don't have to spend as many. So. Hmm. There must be a house in draft, though. Oh, well, yeah, double strike anything, <laughs> except for that yeah. stupid dog, the 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 phase, the blinking the blink dog. dog. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I wanted. I don't know why people keep playing that because I've never seen it do anything remotely powerful. I had one just because I, that was in the draft. I had the three plated uh, like armors already, so I was like, okay, well, mm -hmm. a three mana one one double strike that I can put an equipment on for free. Does seem all right because then it's a four four double strike. I was like, hmm. Yeah, where's equipment? Well, yeah, that. But that's about it. I don't love it. Besides that, I, I love the callback to like damage on the stack, where the idea is like you double strike and then you phase and then it you out phase it so out. It doesn't take damage. Yeah, so that does <laughs> seem pretty fun, um, and it holds a Vorpal blade really well. So, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> if you happen to, which I also opened in that draft. So, <laughs> um, nice. But uh, but yeah, uh, I I feel a little on the fence about Drizzt. Driz, driz mm -hmm. did? I don't know how to say this name. I don't know. I used to think it was Drizzit when I was reading these books as a kid. Like, like is it, you know? Drizzit. Um, but that seems to be not the way people are pronouncing it when I'm looking at it online and this yeah. is happening. And I, I would trust people who actually know better than totally. how I decided to pronounce it as a kid <laughs> when I was reading the, yeah. the R.A. Salvatore I mean, like, books. You never know. Sometimes you, you hit it on the head So um, when you don't overthink it too much. So who knows? Um, mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, we'll see. Uh, all right. So my last card, <clears throat> I, uh, this one gets spoiled pretty early, uh, just like yours. And, um, yeah. I just want it. I, I think I'm just excited for it, it and this deck to be what it used to be. Um, which is like tier three to tier four, five, like maybe not awesome, but um, something people play <laughs> could be could be a sweet sideboard card. I think against some ag aggressive decks, uh, and I, I'm gonna go with Tasha's hideous laughter. So this is yes. one blue blue for a sorcery. <laughs> Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until the player exiled cards with total mana value twenty or more. So this is obviously a mill strategy. Um, and it directly goes against the mill strategy that we're used to because it exiles all the cards. So we're not mm -hmm. trying to get cards into their graveyard. However, it could be better because it gets, it stops any sort of like graveyard shenanigans and, uh, right. all the stuff that we've been dealing with, with mill where, um, oh, the, like with rogues, the thing, how you beat rogues is you're playing a bunch of escape creatures. Well, this doesn't give a shit about that. Obviously, that's not going to be a thing after rotation. But for now, you're like, all right, <laughs> exile all that shit. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and especially... Nice Ox of Agonis. Yeah, and this is a really interesting card because normally mill decks, mono blue mill decks, this is kind of what I'm thinking is going to be mono blue. Um, mm -hmm. They have a really hard time against aggro strategies because aggressive strategies always you know, kill, like, you just don't have enough time to mill their whole deck into their yard. They don't draw right. any more cards. They just, like, beat you to, to shit. But this card's perfect mm -hmm. because all their cards are, like, three or less. And so you get to mill right. or exile a ton of them. And so if mm -hmm. you can hit one or two of these, like, like <laughs> this could be sick. Um, we are losing a lot of good mill pieces uh, in rotation, but... Um, but I think that this this could be an interesting like spells matter uh, mill deck instead of like this this enchantment based ones because um, we don't have Teferi's tutelage or t tutelage is that what yeah yeah. Um, yeah that's what it was but it would basically be like rune crab and this card and some other stuff I don't really know I haven't thought about it yet um, I think there's maddening cacophony you can play maddening cacophony because uh, that gets either uh, a lot of mana to do half of the deck or eight is usually could be good eight, enough. eight for two mana is not the worst right? that's pretty good um mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, I think I just want it to work. I don't know if it's going to. Uh, I'll probably, like, if I, when I see these in draft, I'm like, I'm just going to pick that up just in case I uh, need it later. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be super great, but I think you can cheese out a couple wins. And I definitely like the idea of playing maybe a mono blue deck. And then when you go up against some aggro stuff, you're like, well, maybe we, we pull in some of this mill strategy instead. There might be small mm-hmm. enough pieces that you're like, I'm just playing control, mono blue control, but then I, I pull in my mill pieces for, uh, <laughs> for the totally. aggro strategy. Yeah, I love this choice. I, I love everything about this card, in particular what you said, that it scales, like it's better against aggro decks, and it gets worse against um, you know, ultimatum <laughs> mid-range and control decks yeah. who have bigger mana costs. Mm-hmm. But you're naturally very weak against aggro decks in this strategy so it's like it feels like such backwards card mm-hmm. um which is why i love the design it's like we designed a mill card that's really good against aggro yeah. and it's worse as your opponents play more expensive stuff um and then there's also a bit of uh variance to it which is always fun mm-hmm. you know sometimes you're gonna hit like 15 cards off this like all their sometimes lands hit, <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes you'll hit 28 yeah you know, like. so um cool card it's i have the same concern as you you know like i don't know if if there's enough support we'll have to see what comes with innistrad and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um because like you said yeah it's ruin crab and it's this and And maybe maddening cacophony yeah and then you like what else do you play um i guess any sort of blue (laughs) anything maybe maybe you have to to make it a multicolored but all your important spells are blue so um but hey, Yorion will be gone. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so you don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, you'll, you won't expect to run into 80 card decks. Just, you know, 61 if you're playing against Zach. <laughs> he'll, have, he'll have that extra card and, just and he'll the, be a one card in library and beat you. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's how you play. But um, yeah, we'll see how important some people's graveyards are in Innistrad. Uh, because it could be a great hoser like oh awesome this also just exiles a bunch of shit um like there's definitely some stuff in this set like demi lich or even death Mm -hmm. you know of cards that can come back from the graveyard so yeah this is a pretty reasonable way to exile them exactly or you know maybe you're playing mono blue and you want to play your demi lich because then you can replay this spell there we go that seems kind of fun mill demi lich mill sounds pretty cool (laughs) It sounds fun, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Do we have any other, like, cheap... Your Maddening Cacophony feels less bad if it helps power out a Demi Lich. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, and then you get... Oh. Hmm. I don't know. That seems kind of cool, though. All right. Yeah. I'm here for it, because then you can also play the Manland that's like a... What is it? Like a 7-7. Hall of the Frost Giants? Yeah. Hall of the, Hall of the Storm Giants. Storm Giants. Yeah, it makes a 7-7 seven, seven, uh, with Ward 3. <sighs> yeah. I'm, I mean, we're not trying to kill them with damage, but that's no, good blocking. No, that's for blocking, yeah. It's a 6-mana <laughs> yeah. blocker <laughs> for the turn. <laughs> well, it's actually like a 7-mana blocker. Cause that's true, because you have, you have, have, other you have, lands, have, have yeah. 6 other lands. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, like, it's a 6-mana tapped uh, creature. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. Uh, but anyway, those are the cards that we think are worth a slot slash long shots, mm-hmm. but could be sweet. Um, and, yeah. So. And uh, stay tuned for our happy hour episode when we're about to go to, to uh, Innistrad because we will see if these cards were actually worth a slot or not. I guess most of them. Sure. Well, I guess maybe we should do that after rotation because uh, <laughs> that's all we talked about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to keep playing Core Set 20, or Standard 2022. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um. But, uh, Jeff, do you hear that? No, I'm not, I'm I think, not hearing anything. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a ringing. There's like a bell. Oh, okay. It's like a last call yeah. bell. Oh, no, I didn't. We need, need more. my headphones. Yeah. Not, cu- not coming through. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll get that fixed. To be fair, I, I, I think I've just years of tuning out the last call. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just like keep yeah. drinking. Just uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pulling the, bo- the bottles out of the bar <laughs> while the bartender's not looking. That's right. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, we're going to go to last call and grab the last beers of the night. All right, Jeff, you ready for this reveal? Oh, I'm ready. What are we doing this week? All right, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. I, I, for a second, I thought you were going to pick my beer. For a, I, like, nah. I, I really, really thought. 
don't, don't go crazy on me now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, kind of a normal thing. We, we picked our own beers. Um, mm-hmm. Coming into this, I really thought I was going to pick Octopus Wants to Fight. Um, sure. But I don't know if it's because my apartment is really hot and the refreshing ones are just really... This happened last week, too. The refreshing one is really pushing out the, the other beer every time. Uh, but this one was like... Yeah, that's fair. I, you know, it's really doing it for me in, in the, the climate I'm in, in my, mm-hmm. uh, my apartment that I can't have air conditioned as we record. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have my, my quiet fan in the background. Oh, that's very me, nice. So. That's very nice yeah. for you. Um, but yeah, so I, I picked... Um, this is this. this. This is this beer. Sorry, what'd you pick? Kvike. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's talk about our rating system real quick. If you're new to the show, we we rate beers on a scale of bronze to mythic because you know that's the tiers in arena. So that would make sense since we're regulars on arena. And um, also, this has nothing to do with if you are in any of these tiers. Don't don't feel bad if we're uh, bashing a tier. It is only about beer. It has nothing to do about tiers. Cool. We're good? I mean, I'm in silver in draft right now, and I've been unable to get I, out of I, it. So. I am also in silver, and I cannot get out as well. So, uh, <laughs> But with that, uh, bronze is a trash beer. It's a beer that you, you throw in the trash because it's so bad you don't want to finish it. Yeah. Silver, these are macro brews or basically nothing going on, a lot like my draft decks. <laughs> uh, gold is, they're fine, but um, you know, you're not really excited about them. Platinum is uh, solid. You would drink this again. Diamond is, you would, uh, you love this. You would recommend it to someone, uh, especially one of your friends. Great beer. Yeah. Mythic is the best of the best. And so this these, this beer is so good that if you see someone considering it at the, the local store, you will tell them they need to try it. That's right. Uh, so let's get right into our ratings uh, for these beers. Um, where do we want to start, Jeff? What are, what are we thinking? Well, let's start with uh, with yours then. Okay, all right. This is this. This is. This. Mm. <laughs> I, I, love I couldn't it. remember the name of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That is is not this." Is Th- that what this is this. Uh, so yeah, it's this is not that. So it is slash isn't. It is what it is. It, it's a k- kvike, um, which I still think just means yeast. Uh, kvike style beer. Oh, oh. Here's the thing. Oh, Jeff, I'll do something for you. I'll read the back of it for you. This is this, our homage to the classic film, The Deer Hunter. Okay. Uh, I have never seen The Deer Hunter, so that's, uh, that's great news. Yeah, uh, to, that explains why I didn't get that. Exactly. Case, but know. now I see the, the antlers on the... Okay, that, maybe I should have seen that film at some point <laughs> in my you know, film history classes. Anyway, uh, this Kvike-style beer contains just one hop and a special yeast called Ebgarden. Okay, Ebgarden Kvike, sorry. The two together make some big flavor. All right. All right, <clears throat> I see it. Um, yeah, I I liked this. I that I, lines up fairly well with my interpretation. Like, I felt when I was drinking it that it kind of just feels like a, a bit simple, mm-hmm. but it was just uh, a little hoppy and but otherwise basically a Nordic kind of lager. Yeah, yeah. I uh, yes, the body wasn't too strong. Exactly, it wasn't I, too heavy. I felt like it was really. Uh, it does have some nice flavor to it. It doesn't feel like it just has to be like this like ice cold thing uh, that uh, is like has wheat. Um, I think it just like has a crisp, nice flavor. It was cold, really got me where I need to be tonight. Uh, and I was surprised. I was thinking it was going to be lower on my list, but like I'll put this at platinum. I liked it. You know, nice. Just felt it just felt yeah. good. I'd qualify it as like super drinkable, but. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily giving up on the flavor that that term usually comes with, right? Yeah. Usually you hear drinkable and you think, like, oh, it has no flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not true here because you do definitely get the hops that they used in that. I think I just like a beer with a bit more body. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe it's because I have my fan pointed at me, so I wasn't in the, <laughs> I wasn't overheating here with the need for the, yeah. the summery drinkable beer. Um, but I think it was, it was pretty solid for me. I'd, it's probably right on that gold platinum uh, cusp. Cusp. So since you brought it, I'll give it gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. Um, yeah. This is one of those ones. Like I could see 
um, I could see me being able to drink a bunch of these um, because it's mm-hmm. technically strong beer, but it's just five point six. And um, yeah, this this could be one of those like uh, cookout beers that's just like hot day drink it. So yeah, I'd be interested to to try to like look up what the exact yeast they're using is like Mm -hmm. what's supposed to make it special and see if I can taste that, you know, in the next time I try it, but if I can appreciate, because it does seem like it's all about the yeast based on how they, they named it after that. Um, it has like a, a sweetness that's not so, um, I don't know, sweet, I guess. I don't know what, I don't know how to explain that, but it it has like a, a nice richness to it. Yeah, Yeah. Kind of, uh, I don't know if I'd say dry, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I... Anyway, that's, that's what I have to say about that. But Octopus wants to fight. How is this coming back around? Uh, how is the one, yeah, two punch? Uh, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight punch. Um, <laughs> it was everything I remembered it yeah. to be. Um, it's just a super solid IPA. I don't think it blows my mind, but it's, you know, fun marketing and a fun kind of name and stuff. And uh, it's your classic, like, high IBU IPA. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, I agree. Um, I like the, the funness of it as well, the fun name. And, uh, totally, yeah. I, I agree. It is, like, you know, it's a solid IPA. Um, it, actually, no, what, what, what do you think it gets before I just start rating everything? For me, it's just, you know, kind of just a quintessential platinum beer. Yeah, I agree. It feels very much like, yeah, this is an IPA. It's a good IPA. Um, I'll, I'll pick it up sometimes. But uh, as we said, like, we've had this before. Haven't picked it up in a long time. Um, and that could be a big reason of, like, yeah, I've had that. It's, it's good. I also think that for me, part of it is, like, Great Lakes makes some really good beers. Mm-hmm. And so I often get their other stuff instead of this. Yeah. Um, and there because are, for me, this one's just good. Yeah. Uh, and there are other IPAs that I pick more than this however if i saw octopus wants to fight at a bar um mm-hmm. i'd be down for a bar fight i i would go in for that so totally yeah, um, let's do it. <laughs> but you know what i mean like it is interesting that now we're in this world where we're always picking up beers at the liquor store but not looking at it on a menu as much and we're slowly getting back into that while it was on yeah. a menu i was like yeah yeah I'll, I'll order draft a lot um but then when it was in the store it just was like oh yeah i've had that um, this is one of those beers that would benefit from being on draft too. Like, yeah. I think all beers, you know, mostly benefit from being on draft, but some, some are more noticeable than others, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like nitro stouts really suck in cans. I <laughs> still think a, a canned, a canned Guinness is, is still good. Um, mm-hmm. a bottled Guinness is not. Cause they don't have the little thing. Yeah. In it, right. You got, you got to have the little, the ping, little ping pong, ping pong ball. ball thing. Yeah. Uh, so good. And it also makes the coolest sound. Anyway, yes. <laughs> uh, don't be surprised if I bring Guinness sometime because I, yeah. <laughs> I love me some Guinness. Uh, but anyway, those are the things we think about those things. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> now I think we're getting to closing time. Closing time. We just got to keep the tradition going because, you know, why, why stop now? Um, right. <laughs> we're episode 37. Just, just keep it rolling. Uh, we got to get our uh, our cover version out. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Uh, anyway, actually, if you, I haven't played the guitar in a while, so I haven't uh, sang I haven't sang a song in a while. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you ever want to reach out to us and just say hey, what's going on? Uh, you can find us at Arena Regulars on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, or you might find us on the username arena regulars podcast on arena itself i might have to play there because i'm out of gems on my app <laughs> <laughs> perfect if you want to talk to me personally you can find me at zulberg on instagram and twitter that's z-e-u-l-b-e-r-g but jeff where can they find you find me at blues brews mtg on twitter uh, all one word spelled like it sounds and we would love if you would leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, on iTunes. Follow us on Spotify and Stitcher. Anywhere that you are listening to this podcast, that would be awesome. Go check out our YouTube channel. Uh, and just, like, you know, click the bell icon just to see whenever we post videos, whenever we do that at some point. This has been the Arena Regulars. Reminding you not to let your opponent venture into the dungeon when you're at one life. Good night.
All right, that's fine.